Hello, my name is Brett Milano, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over the diversified key symmetric authentication use case available through the Trust Platform Design Suite software. So let's get started. Here we have the interface architecture for this use case. On the host side, which is here, we have a SHA-105 device protecting the keys on the host. And on the client end, we will have a SHA-104 in this tutorial, but you can also use a SHA-106 device to protect the keys on the client. Some of the benefits to diversified key symmetric authentication is that each client device will have its own unique key derived from the master key. So this will mean that if any of the devices become compromised, that the other client devices will not be compromised because they all have their own key. Another benefit is that you can leverage down to very small and cost-efficient MCUs down to the 8-bit, which will allow for easier integration into existing projects or uh, projects with size constraints. And then lastly here, the master key and the diversified key will have both be protected in tamper-resistant secure authentication ICs. And that would be the SHA-104, 105, and 106. Then the only drawback to diversified key is that, and really for any type of authentication, is that the master key does have a risk of being exposed during manufacturing. And to address this, Microchip provides its secure provisioning service to eliminate any of those back doors during manufacturing. So here we have a diagram of the provisioning process for diversified keys. First, the master key will be loaded into Microchip's HSM, then directly into the host crypto authentication IC. Then, we'll, for the client device, we'll take the serial number from a specific device and load it into the HSM and take the master key and the serial number and hash it through a key diversifying function, or KDF, to produce a diversified key. That diversified key is then placed in the client device in its own crypto authentication IC, and then the, uh, you're ready to execute in field. So in the field, uh, when the two devices interface, the client will send its serial number over to the host, and the host will run the serial number and its own provisioned master key through a key diversifying function like what happened in the HSM. This will produce a, its own diversified key, and then the host will send a random number challenge to the client, and both the host and client take the random number challenge and hash it through a function such as the SHA-256 function to produce a response. The client then sends its response back to the host where it's run through a compare function, and the host determines whether or not the client is authorized to interface with the host. So what we'll need for this use case, you'll need the Trust Platform Design Suite software. You'll also need MP Lab software. For hardware, we're going to be using the Crypto Auth Trust Platform Development Kit along with the SHA-104-105 Microbus Evaluation Board. And then the only other two things you need are a laptop and a micro USB cord. All right, so let's get started with implementation. All right, so here I have opened the homepage of the Trust Platform Design Suite. If you need any information on downloading the Trust Platform Design Suite, please look to the description below. The first thing we're going to do is click on this Use Case tab and we're gonna go scroll through the use cases until we find diversified key symmetric authentication. We'll click this, and then we'll go down to the device options and select the SHA-104 device option. This will open a use case window where up at the top we'll have a description of the use case. We actually have a description of each of the types of symmetric authentication here at the top as well. If we click on this arrow here, we'll see the steps for executing the use case, which we're doing now as well as the cryptographic assets list for both the SHA-104 and the 105. And we can see that in the SHA-104, in slot 3, we'll have the diversified symmetric key. And in slot 3 on the SHA-105, we'll have the master symmetric key. So I'll close this. When we scroll down further, we have this tr transaction diagram, which we will use to provision our development kit. Now, before we provision our development kit, 
One thing we need to do before is configure the development kit. So we'll go back to the Trust Platform Design Suite and go into Configurators. We'll scroll down and select the SHA-104. Now, when we configure our development kits, we're just setting up the assignment for what type of information goes into each slot. So we're not going to select anything up at the top. We'll scroll down and you're going to select your device interface and then also disable the limited key use. We'll scroll down and we'll click provision prototype samples. And when we click this, we'll just click OK and OK. And now each slot has the assignment for the type of information that will load into it using the transaction diagram. Now we'll go back and do the same exact thing for the SHA-105. So don't select anything at the top. We'll scroll down and select our device interface and make sure the limited key use is disabled. Then scroll and click provision prototype samples. OK and OK. And now the SHA-105 device on our development kit is configured and has each slot assigned with the type of information we'll load into it. So we can go back to the use case window now, and we're ready to start executing each of these steps to show the process for provisioning, and then also the in-field execution of the use case. So we'll start by clicking one. Also make sure that this is selected here with the check mark. So we'll click one, which generates the master symmetric key. So for the first step, we need to select a few things. So your device interface, and I'm going to select generate a key, although you can also upload or type in your key. Click OK. And we can see in the output window here on the side that the first step was executed successfully. So we can move on to the in-field execution of the use case. So number two here is the host will generate a challenge. It's the random number challenge. See, that was successful. Now the client device or accessory disposable device is going to calculate its response and send it back to the host, where the host is going to verify uh, the response with a check mat command. All right, and now we can see here that all the steps were executed successfully. And now the devices on your development kit are fully provisioned and configured. Now that we have all these steps done, we can actually go and click this button, MPLAB project, and this will open MPLAB to the files for this use case. You can see here, here's the symmetric auth diversified key. So next, what we're going to go into is you'll either want to create more prototypes or you'll want to start the secure exchange process to get your first verification units. So let's go into that process. So the first thing we'll do is go back into the SHA-104 configurator. And this time, we're going to select the use case, symmetric authentication. Then we'll scroll and select your device interface. You can disable the limited key use. And now we can see slot 3 is highlighted, so we can enter some information here. The only thing you need to enter for this use case is your key, and you can either enter it as hex data, or you can upload it through a .pem file. Once this is uploaded, you'll just select diversified key. And then for prototyping, you have two different options. You can generate a provisioning package. This will download the configuration files to your computer, which makes it easy to upload them and use them for more prototypes. Or if you have a device connected to your laptop or computer, you can click provision prototype sample and it will provision the one connected to your device. Now for these two, do not use your real uh, cryptographic secrets. You'll want to use dummy keys because these are only meant for prototyping. When you're ready for your first verification units, you can go to Salesforce and Microchip will provide you with an RSA key. With that RSA key, you can come and fill in your configuration in slot 3 using your real keys for your project, and then click 
Generate Encrypted Provisioning Package, which will prompt you to insert your RSA key. And with the RSA key, you'll be able to download the encrypted configuration file. This will be one of four files that you need to provide microchip on your Salesforce ticket. The second file is the configuration for the SHA-105. So you'll fill in slot three and then click Generate Encrypted Provisioning Package. You'll then put in that RSA key again and you'll have the second file downloaded for your Salesforce ticket. The last two files for the full secure exchange process, you'll go back out into the main page of Trust Platform Design Suite and select Secure Exchange Process. Now here we have a questionnaire that you'll need to fill out and these are the last two files that you'll need to send to Microchip. You'll fill out a questionnaire with some details about your project for both the SHA-104 and the SHA-105. Once you've filled the question out for one of the devices, you'll come to the bottom and click Save User Data, and this will download the questionnaire to your computer in a file ready to be uploaded to Salesforce. So you'll go and you'll do that again for the SHA-104 and the SHA-105. So once you have those files downloaded and uploaded to Salesforce, you'll be able to get your verification units. Thanks for watching this tutorial. For more information on diversified key authentication, please look to the description below. For more information on our other use cases available in the Trust Platform Design Suite, please look to our YouTube channel for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.